<laughs> Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Today on The Grid, we're talking about new gear. We're talking about air shows and aviation photography with our special guest, top aviation photographer, Larry Grace. My co-host, as always, is the real man. He has a Florida tan. He eats bran. He's from Kervlekistan. It's the real rocket man, Eric Kuna. We've got some awesome giveaways once again, and it all starts in just 30 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. I get down, too. <laughs> no, we don't. Mm -mm. Larry. All right. Hey, everybody. We're here. <laughs> We're here. Whoa. Hey. Well, hey, ho. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of The Grid. Scott Kelby here. We've got uh, Mr. Kuna, the hey, Kuna man, Scott. the K-man. Yeah. Over here. How's it going, yeah, Mr. K? It's going great. You like the way I say hi, even though Eric and I were talking well before know, we got right? on the air. But it's just it's just polite. It's just <laughs> yeah. a polite on air thing. So yeah. he's right. And look at we're kinda almost he's right there. the same size. Look yeah, that. that's it's, odd. It's but actually probably one of the best we've had. It is. Hey, we do have a special guest today. He's a dear friend of mine and and one of the top aviation photographers in the country. Uh, he is the president of the ISAP, which is the International Society of Aviation Photography. And Larry Grace. Hey Larry, good to see you, buddy. Scott, good to see you and Eric. Looking hey. good. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. you're out in Phoenix. <laughs> he's he's constantly. Uh, I'm in the Phoenix area. All right. Well, it's good. Yes, good I am. See, good to see you, Larry. So Eric and I have been talking to Larry a lot this week. Anytime that that Eric and I go shoot an air show, the first thing we think is, let's call Larry and see what he's got to say. So first off, Larry knows all the stuff. He just knows all the stuff. He also knows everybody. And so if you're shooting a particular show, he'll go, you want to be on this side of the runway. You want to be over here. You want to do this. You want to do that. Go look for a guy named Fred and he'll open a <laughs> gate for you. He just, he has all these weird connections with everybody in the aviation industry. Oh yeah. So it's, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's, he's a cool guy. It's taken a lot of years to build that up, by the way. Yeah, it didn't come overnight. <laughs> I know. But uh, you guys on the grid, you've heard me talk about Larry, even though this is the first time I think we've had him on the show. You've heard me talk about Larry because he puts together this annual event and I've spoken at it a number of times. Uh, and it is, and I, you guys have heard me say it, it's one of the greatest conferences a photographer can go to because Larry weasels his way into things that... <laughs> People should not get access to. You're on naval bases, but you're not just on the base shooting planes. You're like on the runway. They're flying over your head. You're having a duck and stuff. Larry gets you into crazy places, gets you access you would never get any other way. And he gets people to do stuff for him. I don't know. People like Larry and they just do stuff for him. Why? Is well, that? that's kind of good, but <laughs> it's, it is a, it is a built process. It's a, uh, over the years, learning the right people to talk to and representing aviation photography and photographers because you have to be known and trusted to get the access that we kind of get sometimes. So that's uh, that's part of it. Well, that's true because I remember being in Houston with you a year before LAFT at the, what was it, the Houston Alliance uh, Aviation Show? Actually, it was Fort Worth. The Fort, Fort Worth, Worth right. the You're Bell right. Fort, Worth Fort Worth Alliance Air Show. And I remember Larry calling us all together, all the members that were there, and, and yelling at us, don't screw this up. <laughs> this is, we've got this great access. We've got all these things. They said, don't go here. Don't go there. Don't do this. And oh, yeah. he, he did. He kind of gave us a look. We've got this op awesome situation. Don't mess it up. But he said it in very, in terms where everybody was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, but that is, yeah, that's, that is a... That, that's the military background. That's me being an Air Force guy. <laughs> there you go. That's the well. At least, at least we know where it comes from. What were you going to say, Eric? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I was going to say. I mean, that's with a with a lot of these things. You know, that's what it is. Is you have to gain that trust uh, over. You can't just expect to walk in one day and get all this access. It's about gaining that trust, uh, building that relationship in order to to work towards getting in that access spot or getting that cool thing to happen. And, and a lot of it's laying the groundwork. And that's yeah. what um, I think that's what Larry's talking about is this takes years to get to that point. Yeah. Well, there's one more factor I want to throw in there. It's not only just that, 
It's having people within the industry vouch for you. Mm-hmm. Being able to, they know you, they've worked with you, and they trust you. And a lot of times it's, uh, hey, have you met Larry? Have you seen his work? Or, hey, have you met this person? Or, hey, I know Larry. He's okay to, to work with. And it takes time to build that relationship. Yeah. No, it does. These things don't happen overnight, for sure. Well, so what we're going to be talking about today is, so Eric and I were part of the official team of photographers for the Sun and Fun Fly-In, which I guess is the second largest air show now in America, which is, that's pretty big, yeah. right? That's second awesome. largest air it's show. Big. It's Oshkosh, and then they say it. They say it's second. So uh, it's, it's giant. It is a ridiculously large one. Uh, the Blue Angels were the guests, but the... And Even, they always put on an incredible show. Oh, yeah. It's always an Oh, the Sun and Fun show is, I, yes. I grew up with it. I grew yeah, up in Lakeland, up Florida. It, yeah. where, so it's in my hometown. Yeah. Uh, I grew up uh, going to it as a young kid. And now I can't believe what it's grown into. It is just an oh, incredible yeah. event. But what we want to talk about is we want to talk about some of the gear. We want to talk about how to shoot. Uh, and, and why shooting air shows is so great, because I have a very particular bent on that that I know that Larry's going to want to also share his thoughts <laughs> on it. Uh, we're going to share some pictures that we did. We'll start off with sharing a couple of quick pictures real quick. Uh, Eric got some and I got some. And uh, so Eric is at a different stage in his career than I am. <laughs> so Eric, Eric is in this. Uh, don't go that far now. No, no. I want to tell you where Eric's at. And, and Larry, you'll understand this because Eric is very young. I'm way I'm, older, 20, I I was very young. 20 something years older than, no, but, but so, so Eric has, Eric's not like been shooting for 30 years, you know, like Eric's kind of new to this, which is kind of makes me upset because he's so good at for doing this for such a short time. But Eric is at that point where he goes, well, we're going to sun and fun. I'm going to need to set up remote cameras. I'm going to need to be there at dawn. I'm going to run two remotes, three remotes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to climb up this building. I'm going to risk my life. And I'm in a different place in my career. I'm in like, I need a very light lens. Where can I sit in the shade? Can I get a glass of water? I'm not going to bring any remotes. I'm not going to bring any other lenses. I'm going to bring one lens. Eric brings 75 pounds worth of gear. Eric has all kinds of crazy stuff with him. He's like, and I'm just in a different place. I'm like, no, I used to be in that place. I'd go to a football game and I'd set up five remotes. If I shoot a football game now, I'm like, what's a comfortable time to be there? Is it going to be shady that day? Can I get away with using just a 24 to 70 for the whole game? I'm just in a different spot in my life. Eric is willing to kill himself to get the shots. Now, he does this at every rocket launch. So this was probably a, wa- a walk in the park for him. It, it is. It's a right? very much a walk so in the park. For example, for example, <laughs> Eric is going to get up at 3 in the morning to, to stay today. To, and they, they canceled it. It's going to be the next day. Oh, so next day. <laughs> Eric, listen to this, Eric. He's going to, I mean, uh, Larry, he's going to get up at 3 in the morning. And he's going to drive to St. Augustine, Florida to where there is a, he found a fuselage. Oh, don't tell the people, fuel don't, don't tell oh. people. Oh, oh, I can't. Don't tell people. Okay. There's don't a ruin secret, my shot. <laughs> there's a secret thing he's going to do based on the rocket launch. But to do it, he has to leave his house at three in the morning. He has to drive hundreds of miles. He has to go to a place he's never been, set up, set up multiple cameras, do all this crazy crap that he does. It's just going to be a nightmare. And you know what I'll be doing? Sleeping. Ah, blissful yeah. sleep. Yeah. I'll get up in the morning but and I'll have Scott, a nice cup of coffee and a sandwich. Yeah, but stay about Scott is you've got to get up early. All of us know that the best light is early morning. I know. And it's also late in the evening. Oh yeah, absolutely. And well that's a big thing with uh with shows like Sun and Fun or Oshkosh is they have night air shows. And I love the night air shows. He does because it's it's not night air shows, it's that twilight time which makes for some really cool pictures. I just love him. He does. So. He, he's all over it. He was all the nighttime stuff. I'm right. at home with my family. Yeah, and we're, he's just we're like, watching Wheel of Fortune I'm sending or something. Them pictures and, like, you could have this, but. Yeah, yeah he's setting home. up platypods with remotes and all this kind of crazy crap, and I'm like at home in bed. Anyway, so, uh, hey, Larry, are we? Are they doing Oshkosh this year? Yes, they are. W- when is it? Oshkosh is uh, it's the end of July. July 20th. 20- T, well, I'll end up on the 24th. Uh, so correct me. I'm going to say July 25th through August 1st. Yep. It's a full week. All right. So will you come and drive me there? Because I don't really want to fly. Because <laughs> like they're putting people in center seats again. I'm like, I haven't flown since January of 2019. 
So I'm wondering maybe, no, January of 2020. All right. So a year and, you know, four months. Well, maybe you just get a pilot that's going up there to take you yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, a pilot. That would that's be one way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And to <laughs> fly into Oshkosh is very unique. It's a unique experience. If, for those who have come to Oshkosh flying in, Oshkosh that week becomes one of the busiest airports in the world at that time. You've got everything from small jets, big jets, private jets, small prop planes, and it's a core argument free uh, of aircraft coming in. And it's two different runways, two sets of controllers controlling the field. And it's it's an organized orchestra of and, planes coming and, in. And Larry's watching all of it with a box of uh, chicken and a biscuit and a can of spray cheese. That's and a right. Coke. And a Coke. Diet Coke. All right. Nope, regular Coke. Oh, regular Coke. Okay. I'm regular, Scott. You're right, dying. Regular. Yeah, okay. All right. Hey, uh, I'm going to share a couple of images here. Does the control room have my screen there? I've got a couple of blue planes on it. That would be mine. Here we blue go. Planes. So these are a couple of jets. They're jets. They're, they're blue angels. All right, I'm going to share a couple of pictures real quick. I'm just going to run through them with you. And then I'm going to talk about the gear and stuff because I, I want to go into that because there's a whole thing. with. The, this is my first shoot with my new Canon R6 mirrorless and my Tamron 150 to 600. So I've got some feedback for you on that. But uh, anyway, we'll take a look at a couple of shots real quick. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Got another shot. Uh oh, this, oh, because the screen's not advancing quite as quickly as I'm advancing. You know, I, I posted this shot on Facebook. Can I tell you how many people said, hey, you need to flip those over in Photoshop. <laughs> you need to fix those planes. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Man, they're just being funny. Mm-hmm. So I I'd actually what? I actually had a different picture than this one, and Larry said, "Do you have a tighter grouping?" Yeah. What, and I said, "Yes, I do." But you know what? That's one of the things. You know, when we do our our online classes, like when we do uh, the landscape photography or the travel photography, or whatever conferences that we do, the day before I do a class or whoever does a class, when we did the wildlife, it was Moose Peterson, but we do a class on what makes a good a, uh, landscape photo, what makes a good wildlife photo. So Larry's got that eye because he's been teaching this forever, right? He teaches this at all his conferences and stuff. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the grouping is supposed to be. So Larry looks at it and goes, oh, do you have a ones where the jets are closer to, I'm like, well, that wasn't the one I chose. That's two before. And he's like, yeah, that's the, that's the right one. That's the one you're looking for. I'm like, Oh, you know, but that's just part of the learning process, right? Yeah, that's, definitely. Right. All right. So there's that. It's, it's a big part. So Scott, just, just to bear on that a little bit. It's a, uh, it's, it's a timing thing. Oh yeah, I, and and I'm shooting a you know a, a number of images. I had a lot to choose from because I'm you know click 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 click. You know they're firing away. This is one of my favorite shots from from the whole uh, from the whole week. Um, this is uh, P40, and uh, I'm I'm trying to shoot a slow shutter speed, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I, this is at one one twenty fifth of a second, so you can see the prop blur, so it doesn't look like it's frozen in the sky. So uh, that was one of my favorites, and I was trying to get a Mustang, and I finally did. And I'll tell you why it was such a struggle to get a shot of a P51 Mustang. But uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, but maybe you'll see one here in a second. Here's some more Blue Angels. They're flying in a row. Well, you'll see them in a second. For some reason, it's lagging. Like, a t I hit the image, and it's just lagging. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why is it lagging like that? That's... It's kind of lame. And someone's going to bring me an Ethernet cable in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah. And then. <laughs> All right. Scott, when you get to your uh, your prop shots, let's talk about one for a second to give everyone listening some a little bit more insight to oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll, I'll have some coming up. Oh, here we go. Boom, right there. Next image. Uh, wait for it to come up. There it is. There's the P51. Uh, it's not the ideal image. I'm not crazy about the wing kind of blocking the pilot. It's, you know. But I have a lot of out of focus images of this because uh, I'm I'm panning with it at one one twenty fifth of a second, which is you know, for for someone that doesn't do panning all the time, it's a slow slow shutter speed. And uh, all right, so let's let's talk about this, Larry. Let's because this is you know shooting jets is easy, 
You know, shooting jets, you're going to freeze them in the air. It's, it's not very challenging. The, the biggest challenge, I think, for aviation photography, uh, technic te technique wise, is the slow pan. Panning along with a, an aircraft that has a propeller Absolutely. And, and nailing the prop spin at a slow shutter speed. Because I'm, I'm shooting at like two thousandths of a second to freeze a jet. And now I'm down to one twenty one twenty fifth of a second. So go take it take it away, Larry. Well, so here you go, Scott. When you called and you told me your first day, you were disappointed. A couple of things that people need to realize: if you do not see light on the front of that propeller, you're not going to get that nice little rotation you see a lot of guys go for. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is being able to pan and it's shutter speed. I know a couple of weeks ago, uh, you guys all of a sudden talked about RPM. I got news for you. It's great if you're a math scientist, but you'll never go to an air show and ask the guy next to you, hey, what was that RPM so I can set my shutter speed? You'll <laughs> always hear guys talk about shutter speeds. If you're a beginner, if you don't go out and do air shows a lot, let's say you're gonna go on the weekend, I want you to go home with at least a couple of images you're going to love and be able to put on your wall. So I'll tell any beginner, to at least start at 1 3 20th of a second. You want to shoot a few there. As you're shooting, if you feel comfortable, drop that shutter speed down to 1 2 50th. If it's still looking good, drop it down to 200. You keep dropping it until it gets to a point where it's all messed up. That doesn't mean you can't shoot at that shutter speed. That means you need to practice when you get to that shutter speed. Now, when a plane is flying into, if uh, when it's diving in and the sun is, let's say, off to my uh, left and it's shining there, I can drop the shutter speed. But the one thing I've learned over the years for me and getting older is the heavier the lens, you've got to be more steady as you're, uh, as you're panning and you want to move with the airplane. I do think today with mirrorless and the new lenses that are coming out, I think you're going to be able to cheat two shutter speeds with it lower than you expected. But the other key thing is your balance and panning with the aircraft and being able to follow through with it. But remember, if it's flying away from you, a slow shutter speed's not gonna do you any good. If it's parallel to you, like your Mustang shot there, you're not gonna see, but you see some motion in the uh, propeller. If it's coming towards you and the light's hitting it, that will work. Yeah, Eric, and, Eric's uh, got a better shot where where it's right in the side. And you're right. Like once it's past you, which this is almost past me, yeah. uh, it's not the uh, – so I, I didn't come away with my ideal shot, but Eric, Eric's got a, uh, uh, a nice shot of a Mustang that he sent me this morning, I think it was. Let's see if we can uh, – Let's see. That one. There it is. Yeah. Where it's a little more – you can see the, the propeller a bit more. What yeah. shutter speed is that, Eric? That's one one twenty fifth, and then that's one sixtieth. So you can see like the difference. Oh yeah, that's a nice you get up to there. Yep. So, yeah. So. But the, but those are you know you get to one sixtieth with a long lens. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. I mean that's that's by day three. You know, by day three of shooting, that's where you're getting that. Uh, you're getting used to it. You're yep. getting better at it. It does make a difference. It is. And, yep. yeah, and like, like Larry was saying, if you're shooting it every weekend, you can kind of get in that routine. But you need like, it's almost like you need a day. And we talked yeah. about that the first day we were <laughs> yep. out there. We needed this first day almost to just practice getting that, that rhythm or that speed down. Yep. Because like you're saying, I mean, that's where I find the same thing. Like, like the Jets, uh, it is all about timing with them, but it's a little easier because you're just freezing the action. You're not really having to do that slow shutter pan. You know I mean? If you're just, here's a, you're just freezing the jet. I mean, it's yeah. one. Jets are easy. <laughs> that's but it. Well, one, let me, one let two me thousandth of a second, one three thousandth of a second. It's like, it's frozen. So what were you going to say, Larry? Jet, to be honest with you, you can go to a slower shutter speed if it's not a clear blue sky. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah. All right. When we come back, we're gonna I'm gonna look we're gonna share some more images. Eric's gonna share some. I want to talk about the gear. Uh, I want to give you kind of my my review of the uh, the G the uh, the G2 Tamron 150. And, I, and I've got I've got 600. a new piece of gear that I use at this air show that I love too. I've got a new piece of gear that I have right here that I'm going to show you on set that I haven't even talked about. It's so secret. Boom, boom. It's coming up. Don't go away.
All right, you've got an iPhone, you're taking portraits, they're looking good. You wanna take them to that next level? I got a class for you. So this class is on using lighting with your iPhone to make fantastic portraits. Now, there's all kinds of different lights you can choose. We've got the Lytra up here. We got the Pro Photo. There's all kinds of ones. Doesn't matter as much which brand you have, it's that you're using light. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take professional lighting techniques, the same techniques that we teach to DSLR and mirrorless users, but we're gonna apply them where your iPhone is the main camera, that this is your camera. And your camera is awesome and it takes great photos, especially when we have an app and we can control the lights, we can control the color temperature, we can control so much. It's really, really a whole new world of lighting and I wanna teach it to you. We're gonna go on location. We have Hetty helping us. Come check out my brand new class. It's called Lighting Portraits for the iPhone Photographer. It's exclusively at Kelby One. For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy Award winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. The top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit BorisFX.com, add Optics to your cart, and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we are back. Scott's here. Uh, Eric is here. And we have a very special guest, Larry Grace, dear friend and one of the top aviation photographers in, photographers in the country is here today with us. So we're talking about aviation photography and gear. And Larry just gave some great tips yeah. on us on shooting with those slow shutter speeds. All right. I, I have a tip I want to show Larry. I, and e Eric already knows this tip exists. But uh, you guys, I'm going to show you a Photoshop trick that may or may not blow your mind. Uh-oh, there we go. All right, so first I wanna show you the picture that's on screen, and, and I have a better, right, this is a better one. This is, uh, that's, not, that's not my screen. <laughs> oh, I don't not, know what you're seeing there. That's, that's not, that my, not my screen either. Well, that was the screen like five minutes ago, so it's, it's not the screen that I have up now, and they've hardwired me in, so now we're not using. Uh, uh, or they're still working on that. Or they're still working on that, but to be able to show this trick is, is very important. Let's give some quick shout outs while they're, uh, do I still do I still need to be running that software? All right, go ahead. Eric's gonna give some shout outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got people joining us all over the world. We got uh, you know Don B's joining us for saying hi from Bonita Beach. Then we have Pat. That's, that's Boynton Boynton Beach. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Boynton Beach. Yeah, and then uh, Turgay is joining us all the way from Zambia. We got Ma Mike Litchke from. Um, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Then we got Tanja over there from Den Denmark. We got Diane from San Diego. Lenworth joining us saying hey to Grid Nations. We got Mike Lenworth. A from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, very close. The, drive over to Oshkosh if you're interested. There you go. Uh, Dave R from Windy Central, North Carolina. Yep, that's the reason that the launch got moved is there's a uh, wind in the downrange. So there you go. Uh, and then Kathy A uh, from Larksville, I think that's Colorado, but it, color A. Um, and then uh, we got Rick joining us from Ontario, Barry from Oregon, Jesse from Wisconsin, uh, Brigitte saying hello as well. I think we have Scott screen now, maybe. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So. Okay, so here's the shot. Yep. All right, now you can see the shot, the, I got a better prop spin there on this one. Same thing, it's 125th of a second, but I actually might have, you know, Eric was like, hey, when the jets come by, you might want to raise your shutter speed a little, like from 125th to 250. So it's possible that he did that. I'm, I'm not sure. But I want to show you a, and a really what I think is a really amazing Photoshop. It's Photoshop magic. Ready? So the thing that I like least about this photo is that the planes are so far away from each other. Like, I wish it was a tighter grouping. Yep. Now, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to do like, 
select subject and pick up the planes or move them or anything like that. That's what the trick is. Watch this. Prepare to have your mind blown. Here we go. I'm going to jump over to Photoshop where I have the photo. All right. I'm just going to duplicate the layer so you can see what's going on. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go under the edit menu and you're going to choose content aware scale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you shrink this picture, the photos will automatically compress magically. Watch. I'm going to hold the shift key. You have to hold the shift key. Drag the bottom and watch. Magic. Look at that. Is that crazy? Yep, yep, it Ser is. Seriously, it compresses the, the space without... Now, I did not do this to any of the shots I'm going to show you. I wish I had thought to do this. And I literally, I saw that thing come up on screen just now, and I'm like, dang, I wish there was less space. And I thought, wait a minute. But seriously, is that incredible technology oh, yeah. that it will do that? Look, it'll regroup them, right? And then you'd have to fix the sky, of course. You'd have to fill in, you know, something behind them. But look at the difference. From there yeah, and to there. Can, and it didn't mess with any of the can, objects. You can do that very subtly, too, just to correct little bits of differences. Oh, yeah, you, yeah you, you could do that subtly, but this is... Yeah, look I mean, that's, that's pretty drastic. That is... But, well, I was trying to just show but, the technique, right? But that the point being is you can, you can kind of go anywhere in between that stage if you just wanted to pull it in. And the other thing, you could, you could go the other way. And you could compress them in the other way as well, Scott. So you could kind of push them in so they're even tighter as well. Yeah. 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 You, so, yeah, you could go the other way, too. Like, you go this yeah. way. Whoops. No, hold on. I'm just using Oops. free transform. I have to go to content aware scale. Then let's yes. hold the shift key. Yeah, and you can go the other way. And let's just wait a second till it starts to move them. There you're going. I mean, now, you'd have wow. to do a sky replacement or you, something at this point. But if you point. think about it, like, how tight you got that formation compared to where it was. Right. You know? Right. So, and it's, it's amazing you can do that quickly. I, I, I did not do that, but I'm not above doing it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't so be like, Scott, let me no. tell you something. The trick you just showed yeah. is a very good trick because there is a spot on the field that someone, if they're in the right spot, will get that. But if you're not and you're a little bit further away, that is a pretty good uh, right? technique. I'm going to have to play with that and come back with you on this Okay. One. Did I get five points for that, Larry? I'll give you six. Ooh. Now, I will say there might be a shot in here that I did that with. Oh, you dog. Yeah, I wish I... Be. I can't believe I thought to do it now. Like, now... I won't tell you which one. It's too late. All right, so I'll just... <laughs> I'm going to rip through a few few more real no, quick. that's my screen, not Scott's screen. Yeah, that's that's not the right screen. Here we go. Just... Uh, there we there go. There we go. All right, so... And, and some of this stuff is like the classic shots that you see again and again. You got to get them. Look at this. Stinking, uh, moving away from me. Not Not good. This one I liked, okay, Panchito. I love Panchito. Everybody loves Panchito. That's one of the coolest that planes plane out is there. So beautiful. Yeah, and I got some decent prop spin and stuff. It's not not as prevalent here. You don't see it quite as well because of the angle. Like Larry was saying, that was something I did yeah, not it's think about. Yeah, about that reflection, right? He was about if the light's not hitting the propeller, you're not. Because I had shots where the planes were coming right at me, and you don't see the propeller at all. And he's like, because the light wasn't hitting him at the right angle. This is one of my favorite shots. I don't know why, but I just, I really uh, like the, this. Yeah, you got symmetry. You've got the balance. Yeah, uh, you know. I don't know why. I just, I like the light, the sky it's behind It's also it not a typical shot you see. No. All right, this one, this is the last one. The <laughs> sky was so washed out on this particular angle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was almost white. It was like a light, light, light gray. I said, I'm just going to push it to white. So I just took the highlights and went to the right, and it was white. And so that's uh, that's my uh, Blue Angels shot on white seamless. I shot. love it. I think that's the last one. Oh no, I guess there's one or two more. That's yeah, it's the same stuff you've seen a million times. It's you know, the standard, the standard stuff. Okay, so uh, I, I want to talk real quickly about the the gear, and then I want Eric to go through his and and talk about his setup. Eric and I use different, somewhat different setups. Yes. So this was my first <clears throat> shot, my first one using. The Canon uh, EOS R6 mirrorless. I, I, uh, and I bought a very special lens for it. Now, I went to Eric, who goes to a lot of air shows, and like I asked around, what's everybody shooting at these air shows? Like, what's the hot lens right now? Everybody's like, oh, it's the Tamron 150 to 600. 
I'm like, okay, well, I don't, I, I don't want to spend twelve thousand dollars or the sigma, the sigma right? Sigma is very popular, right? But you, we, you. You've used the Tamron. You like I'm a the Tamron, Tamron guy. Yeah. yeah, I love Tamron. Okay. So anyway. There's one more lens I'm going to drop in on you guys Ooh. on this discussion. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Eric was using the rented a Sigma. Yes, yes. I, well, I've got, I've got another one that I'll talk about. Okay. And then I had the Tamron. I want to hear, before we go on, Larry, what's your, what's your lens you're dropping in? The 60 to uh, 600 by Sigma. Right. That's what I, that's what I used. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's what you had, the 60. Yeah, you did 60 have the 60. the 60. I'll show you that. I mean, most of my shots are that. All so. right. How did you like it in comparison to the Tamron? Because you shot both. Um, I mean, I'd go with the 60 to 600 if I had to pick just because, if, especially now, I hate to say this because you just got this, but for you, it'd be perfect because it takes you down to one camera body. You know, before I would carry a... 70 to 200 right and then like the 100 400 or the 150 to uh, 600 right it takes you down to one and it's like oh and my I gosh have to, Interesting. scott i'm going to agree with that i found by having the 60 to 600 gives me a lot more flexibility at an air show i can kind of shoot a uh static real quick and then turn around yep. and uh, yep. uh work with air uh up to the air with it well, that's great, guys. Thanks. Thanks very much. But anyways, Thanks. you've got the 150 to the 600. And well, I'm very happy with it. I, yes. I could no, not it's be a great lens. It. It's an incredible lens. lens. Yeah, incredible. I, I love and it. And honestly, it, it definitely, the, there's a couple drawbacks to the 60 to 600. On the wider side, you get a little bit more aberrations. Of course, we can take care of that in post. Right. It's just like your 24 to 240. Right. 240. There's, there's little drawbacks to it. But well, you can take care of it in post. Yeah. But they're not like dramatic drawbacks. So. Okay. So the lens, I, I loved. I loved the size. I loved the price. The yes. price was really, really <laughs> good. And, and they had a good deal on it at B&H. There's a picture of it. Okay. So that's it. Uh, now, a lot of it, look at the lens. Look at the picture. Well, first, look at the handsome guy. Come on. Yeah. Anyway, but look at the look lens. At that, look at that framing on that shot. Oh, oh my just, gosh. Look a, at the plane in the background. Oh, like, yeah. Who this, shot that? Eric took that. <laughs> okay. So, but, but look how much of the lens is the lens hood, right? So it's about the size of a 7200-ish, and then yep. you've got the lens hood. However, I do want to share a, a, a picture that, that Eric sent me because there's something. Let me grab this real quick, and I want to show you two pictures real quick because eric sent me these i asked him to take them and he dropped them to me and they are i have them right here one second all right it's this right here let me open these in preview i guess all right one moment please don't move don't breathe all right so this is if you can see on screen here let me just pull this out this is the lens as it comes so you can see if you look it's kind of like a 70 to 200 but then you put this big thing on there well that lens hood's pretty big the lens hood is big but it's okay yeah. it's not heavy yeah, it's, it's not weighs heavy. nothing all right then watch when you zoom out to 600 it extends outside the body so if you want to move people out of the way like you watch out photographer coming through you extend mm -hmm. the lens first and you walk through the crowd and go, watch out. A serious photographer, the very long lens. You extend it first. So here's without the extension. So this is how it like packs up in your bag, but you take, of course, the lens hood off. And then you scare people with the long lens. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now, my Canon R6, it did something absolutely amazing. It blew my mind. And Larry... If you see this happen in person, it is mind blowing. I'm going to have to pop over <laughs> to my blog to show you this real quick because that's where I have the actual uh, article. But, uh, oh, no, no. I, I did I drop it into Lightroom? I think I might have dropped Did I have a chance to drop it into Lightroom? Here, let me drop it into Lightroom. I'm going to show you so I can show you big because this is, this is flipping stunning. Okay? It's flipping stunning. Here we go. I guess it already is in Lightroom. Hang on. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. I must have just imported it because it, it wouldn't import it. So it's, that means it's already here. Or not. Where is it? Okay. I'll just have to do it the old-fashioned way like we used to do back in... Um, here we go. All right. <laughs> I cannot. 
Yeah. Hey, Scott, do me a favor. When you put that picture up, I want you to go back to the picture of you holding your lens for a second. Okay. Are you going to tell me I have, like, bad lens uh, posture or something? Nope. Okay. Nope. Something else I'm going to share. All right. Hold on. Okay, so this is this is the thing that that give me one second here. This is the thing I want to show. So with the R6, with the Canon R6, all you have to do is you see a plane kind of up in the sky, hauling butt at like 450 miles an hour. You just aim your camera in the direction of the plane. Ready? You do that, and it automatically finds the plane and snaps the focus onto it, and then starts tracking with the plane. Over over the whole area yeah too. like it'll I mean, keep edge going to edge like it's yeah edge it'll just edge. go boop, boop, boop. like like in other words you just go okay it's up there aim up there and it goes zzz, and it locks to the plane and then starts following it so as it's moving across the sky it's already following with the plane guys i i was it's incredible it's incredible it is incredible that's I, a game changer dude yeah. i showed some other photographers it and they were just like holy because they're all like i gotta get one of these yeah i mean literally you just aim it at a blur up there it's, and, it goes, and it's like boom and it's fast it's boom. like that <laughs> it is just and it zings on it and then it locks the focus now i, I was using a eric kuna technique which is the wide area horizontal focus because the planes are usually moving across the sky like this. They're not so much going up and down, but they're moving this way. So there uh, you can uh, don't try to do the single point or any of that stuff. Just go find it. And it, it locks on. It's to That's see so it, good. to see it happen in person. I'm just like, as R fives and R sixes are so good at it. This is cheating. It's this cheating. is absolutely it is. cheating. <laughs> it goes and finds the plane for you. And all you have to do is press the shutter. You're like, okay, it's right. Cause what I do is Larry, I would get it way off like miles down the road and, yep. it, and then it starts tracking. And then you just wait till it gets where it's filling the frame. Click, 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 click. I mean, it's, it's, it is literally like cheating. So that's the good part. Uh, it, the camera was fast. The, uh, everything worked great. The focus, the autofocus and stuff, absolutely fantastic. I loved everything about it except for one thing. And let me go to my blog to show you what that awful one thing was. During the day, I'm shooting. I'm out there with Eric, and we're, we're on this uh, stand that's close to the... Th this happened. Error 70. An error prevented shooting. Turn the camera off and on again or reinstall the battery. So I turn it on. I turn it off. Doesn't work. I turn it on again. Now you realize, Larry, you know what's happening? The P-51 is flying, literally. <laughs> the plane that I went to get is flying when my camera goes down. Zoom right by. It's flying right by. Eric's over there. Click, 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 well, click, I'm click, clicking. Click. I'm firing. And then I look down and like Scott's like looking at his camera and like fumbling around with it. And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, look at this. I can't shoot. I can't do anything. So then I had to take out the phone. We had to look it yeah, up. I take the battery out. I yeah. put it back in. It doesn't work. I take Nothing's the battery working. out. And, and, and I take the battery out. I put the camera in. I turn on the camera. It's nothing. It's like it's dead. It's just, it's just the screen's black. Viewfinder's black. It's just out. It's just not working. So Eric looks it up on the internet out of the field. And Eric says, oh, that's, it says it's a data error. Yeah. Data error. That's what, it. what does that mean? How do I fix thanks, that? Thanks, uh, what, Canon engineers. <laughs> what does that tell me? So I, I have started, uh, I have started looking, you know, and doing research and figuring out what's, cause it's happened to me a dozen times. It happened to be yesterday sitting on the set with a webcast. Now there are a lot of possibilities of what this could be because I did, uh, my, my camera, even though it's brand spanking new, was on the old firmware. Yes. It was on the 1.0 firmware. Canon has had three updates. It's now on 1.3. So yesterday I updated the firmware. That might take care of the problem. I, ca I called Tamron, contacted them, and they said, your camera already has the firmware update in it. 
to work with the R5 and the R6. Yeah, so your lens. I, your my lens, lens is sorry. all updated. I'm sorry, my lens. Yeah. I called Tamron. My yeah, lens made is sure updated. The lens is all updated because there was a period where there was problems with the R. Right. R yep, when it first this, came yeah. out. Now, Tamron offered, they said, look, send it back. Or we'll, take, we'll be glad to take yeah. a look at it. If you think there's something wrong, we'll be glad to yeah, take a look at it. Yeah, because maybe it's a connection issue. Because, again, it's yeah. a data issue is all that Canon's saying. Is, yeah. Uh, that doesn't really help anybody. So, so <laughs> a guy wrote on my blog. And he says, he said, uh, hey, Scott, I'm an ex-Canon factory service tech, now running my own camera repair service in Jacksonville, Florida. The error that you're experiencing, the error 70, is almost always due to a defective main board in the camera. The camera may work on and off, but the problem will always return. Often the problem correlates to a defective memory brush or, uh, buffer issue uh, with, the, with the main board related to power. The only way to get rid of it is to send it to Canon for service. Since this is a fairly new camera, it should be still in warranty. Yeah, it's definitely still in warranty. But so now that I've just yesterday, I did the firmware update. Before I send the lens to, to Tamron, before I start getting on Canon, I'm going to see if, if because another guy wrote right here. I had the same error on the R6. The new firmware fixed the problem, version 1.3. Love my R6. It's my fourth Canon, by far the best. If I can get this feature fixed, this has been my dream camera. Yes, yes. I mean, if that, you could fix this because that's the only well, down. That's that. I mean, that's a downside when you can't right. shoot with the camera. I know. But here's the thing: <laughs> there's not a. It's not like you go online and there's a ton of people talking about no, this issue. No, I think you know? it's an. This is an oddball. Now, Larry's an icon shooter, so Larry's just kind of. He's got a little smile on his face, like, "Oh, the Canon <laughs> guys are having problems." <laughs> So I, I noticed I he has that little smile. Did you notice yeah. that? He loves hearing about Canon shooters with a problem. Because Larry's really, but, he's not a very But nice I will guy. admit, I have friends that shoot Canon. <laughs> well, yes. that's, that's, that's high praise. Yes. <laughs> you know, and you and still uh, talk to them. Wow, so, that's nice. So Tom is asking, uh, and I think he's talking about the autofocus feature that you're talking about, Scott. Is that feature on the R on the R5, R6, or both? And it's on both. Yeah, like, it's on both. The R5 and R6, their autofocus is almost identical. I've used both of them. Yep. Uh, and it, it is. Everything Scott's talking about on both models, the same. All righty. Hey, we're going to take a short one when we come back. We're, we're, we're really doing poorly on managing our time today. Yes. Uh, we have a great conference coming up. It is the Outdoor Photography Conference. It's a two-day all-online conference, and it's very exciting. It's coming up here in just a few weeks. It's coming up in May, so you want to be a part of it. We'd love to have you there. Uh, we're going to show you a little brief little teaser on it coming up, but uh, we'll be right back. Don't go away. we got more Larry, more love, and Eric's shots and stuff coming right up. Imagine if someone took the same photographic techniques and principles and tools used by today's top pro photographers, but they applied those same techniques to shooting with the iPhone. Imagine the type of images that you'd be able to create using those same ideas. Well, that's exactly what I did in my brand new book. It's called the iPhone Photography Book. You're going to learn exactly what the pros use to create those incredible images. And, and when people see your shots with the iPhone, they're going to go, I cannot believe you took these with your phone. But with the quality of the iPhone's camera and what they're doing with the iPhone software, you can absolutely take amazing pictures. In the book, I leave all the techno speak out and instead I treat the whole book as if it were just you and I out on a shoot together, just you and me with our iPhones. And I'm there for just one reason, to help you unlock the power of your iPhone so that you make pictures that when your friends and family look at it, they go, wait, you took this? That's what the whole book's about. You'll learn which tools to use to make pro quality portraits in any lighting situation. You're gonna learn how to create stunning landscape shots that will make people swear that you took that with an expensive DSLR or a mirrorless camera. You're gonna learn proving posing techniques that flatter your subject and make anyone you photograph look their very best in every shot. You're gonna learn how to organize, how to edit your photos like a pro, and you're gonna learn the pro's tips for making amazing shots of everything from flowers to product shots, from food photography to travel and everything in between. And if you're ready to start taking these pro-level shots that blow people's mind, 
then this is the book for you. It's in print and all the ebook formats, and you can get it directly from the publisher at rockynook.com, or you can pick up your copy wherever fine, fine books are sold. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Well, we're back. Who's Larry, are you beating on your desk? Don't beat on your I desk. Think he I, is. Was. I think he's playing the drums over there. <laughs> Don't play the drums, man. All right, so uh, Larry asked me to pull up this sh picture of me holding the... Uh, Holding the uh, the camera, and so okay. it's on screen now, Larry. It's here's two tricks. Now you notice how the the uh, tripod holder is underneath you. Oh, you're talking. You're I talking would about suggest rotate it to the top of the camera. And the reason I say that is because then you're able to hold the lens a little bit firmer and steadier when you pan. The second thing I'm going to recommend is add a. Um, a battery pack to the camera. Why? Yeah. Because I think the battery pack will help balance that longer lens as you shoot. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Let me go to B and H and see how much they cost. But yeah. I, I thought shock. about that. Wait for the shock and awe when oh, he sees it, the battery is pack it, for is it a lot? R, R5 and 6. All right, so the battery grip. Shock and awe. About is it happen. bad? <laughs> Canon R6. Oh, no. Is it really bad? Oh, it's three hundred and forty-nine dollars. Yeah. Cameras cost three hundred and forty-nine dollars. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Holy cow! Woo! That's a lot of money. Yeah. Now, Talking here's off. the bad thing: you can't. There might be an off-brand name that might work, but if you can stick with the manufacturer, go with the manufacturer. Larry, I'm worried. However, I'm however, I'm going to say this because I, I rocket. I have to put battery grips on them. And I have, you know, like old 70s, old D5, D Mark IIs. All aftermarket battery grips all cost me like $30, $40. Never, ever had one fail. Ever. All right. Let's see if we can find Same here with the Nikon. Just saying. Just saying. I don't think anyone's but making it. I don't yet. think they're making an aftermarket uh, one yet. So. Okay. Well, all right. Well, there. Thanks. You cost. Thanks, Larry. You cost me three hundred fifty <laughs> bucks. All you right. Know, next, another thing that's nice about the the collars um, on the Sigma and on the Tamron is it actually has the um, Arca Swiss plate or like the tripod attachment will attach right to your ball head, so you don't have to put on another plate yeah. underneath it, which I think is great. I don't know why Canon doesn't do that because. It would be awesome. All right. Back with you live. All right. Eric's going to show some pictures. I have some new gear to show you and some new yeah. other stuff. So let us, uh, let's go see what, let's All check right. Mr. Kuna's shots. So here's what we got. So um, there's the, uh, so we got the Blue Angel number five going right by the Lakeland Tower there. Uh, there's, there's your That's a nice shot. Mustang, right? I like that one. That's, that's the shot I wanted to get. Can I just take yours? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. So, and there's that, that one I was saying, uh, yep. slow shutter speed. That's yeah, nice. One sixtieth nice. of a second. There's a couple more. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. So this is nice. the night air show. Oh, know. I didn't see that Corsair that was there. Yeah, right? because you weren't at the night air show. <laughs> and there's it dropping right below the sun. That's nice. Um, it's got that. Then uh, there's the Aeroshell team doing their demo at night. I missed the night air show, didn't I? Yes. And we got Mike Whiskus coming right by the tower where we were out at. It pays to stay up late at night, Scott. Very funny, Larry. Dropping in. We're not, <laughs> we're not friends anymore. That was the heritage flight on the one day. That was a limited heritage yeah, flight. A limited there. heritage flight. There's another uh, Raptor. You know, I didn't show any of my Raptor shots. I don't like, I don't like yeah. the Raptor. Yeah. No, I mean, I like it as a jet, okay, but it's always just one jet. And what right. makes what makes the Blue Angels special is multiple jets. The, yeah, the, the, the Raptor, it. they go, now it's flying to the left. No, it's flying I to the right. You. It's I just like... So. Uh, it's a hard plane to, like, yeah, get, yeah. like, it kind of all looks the same. And it's not beautiful. You know, it's not yeah. ugly, but it's, it's not a warthog. <laughs> it's not a warthog. Okay, so, Scott, can I tell you how to make the plane look a little bit nicer to your eyes to shoot? Yes. Don't stay at show center. Yeah. Go to the corner markers when you understand that. Watch an aircraft come into the, the zone from the corner as it banks and turns. When he drops his, uh, that's where it gets really interesting. That's where I think the best images come from. When it's straight and level, yeah, 
I yeah, can, the, I can the see where your, shots your disappointment that I, that could I be. Was showing was exactly what Larry's talking about. They're at the the right and the lefts because, and that's what I'll usually is. So show center like for one, you know, one day, and then right and left the other ones. Yeah, my Raptor shots are. Stupid. Um, so we got um, then you got here. You got the blue edge is really tight. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. There we go. So really, really in. Nice tight shots. And then them breaking out. That's nice. That's a good breakout shot there. Yeah. And then same thing, them breaking out. Always love that. And then trying, again, slow shutter pan, getting really slow with it. So you know what? This is just me. Can you go back to that shot? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing your shot. At this. I'm talking about this genre of shots. Yes. I don't like seeing the trees or the, the tower or any of that stuff back there. Yeah. So I don't have a single shot like that because when I saw them down there along the tree line, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know. And, but it, there are people that like it. I'm just, that's, that's, and it's not on you because everyone's shooting those shots. Oh yeah. And then there's a wider. So if you can get, that's the whole thing of like, you can get out at 60 as well as these in, in, yeah. in tight shots 60 really that's um, nice. did some night photography uh, with the uh, fireworks show so that was actually a glider that came through that was shooting off fireworks then got the fireworks as well what lens and, are you using there can you go back um, that's a Tamron 150 or that's a Tamron 15 to 30 ah, okay and then uh, I actually took the infrared camera over one day and did some infrared stuff as well well you don't see that very so, often did some infrared shots and then uh, did some platypod shots uh, with the stole competition where it got down low, got on the other side of the runway, and got stuff like that. So there you go. Very cool. Very nice, Mr. Kuna. Yeah. Well, nicely done. Beautiful shots there. Thanks. Uh, so uh, speaking of platypod, I, I think I may have a new ball head for my platypod. Right here. Hmm. What? This is from the Colorado Tripod Company. So these are people that make the breakthrough. Lenses. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's this? Look at this. Look at this ball head. Wait. <sighs> Comes in this lovely packaging. And inside here is a glorious. Look at that nice small. Can you see this? Look at this nice. And the movement of the ball head is so nice. Ah, this Beautiful. looks so well made. Now, I haven't really got to try it yet. I just got it literally yesterday. So, is that a nice ball head? That's a nice ball Dude, head. would this fit perfectly on a, on, this is like, so I've been using the Obin. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to do this one. Yeah, why not? Dude, this is a beautiful, plus, you know what this one does? It's got a slot here on the side that lets you go beyond 90 degrees and you can slide to the sides at 90. It's really nice. Like, yeah. I don't know any other ball head that lets you do that. There are some that'll let you go over, but anyway, this is... I love, yeah, it's great. It's very nicely done. Hey, you know, speaking of gear, I did not talk about right. uh, the gear. Uh, the, the shot, the oh, most... Yes. Please, mo go. Please I stop. would say, besides the platypod shots and the infrared shots, they were all shot with a 10-year-old camera. It was a 1DX. A one day. Is it 10 years old? 10 years old. Oh, my so, gosh. Uh, now, it was shot with the 60 to 600 Sigma Sport uh, lens. So 60 to 600 Sport. Love that lens. Uh, like yes, I said, that's probably, uh, if you wanted to get down to one lens for an air show, uh, that's definitely going to be it. I mean, Larry, what, do you have the 60 to 600, oh. Larry? Yes, I do. And... Actually, it's been my kind of uh, my go-to lens for ground-to-air shooting. Well, that's great to hear now, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, Scott, you tried the lens at uh, Alliance with me that year. Yeah, I wish I'd remembered that. So now, <laughs> so let me get this straight. Larry has the Sigma 60 to 600. Eric yes. has the, did you buy that lens? No, no you rented I just it. rented it. He just rented it. Well, now you have to buy Tamron, so I don't feel bad. Anyway, because that's how it works. We need other people to buy the same thing we have so we feel good about our, our choice. No, I'll I love, you, that, that, I, all joking aside, yes. I love mine. Yes, I mean, they're both, they're both great lenses. Both will do great, yeah. you know, great things. Hey, Larry, uh, Dave is asking, uh, do you recommend using a gimbal head when you're shooting at an air show? 
you got to he's probably not going to like my answer but no yeah, the thing about one. airshow photography is that you have to have the ability to move on a gimbal head you're limited and if you're in a crowd of people you you have limited motion uh, but at times it can't come in handy it will work but a majority of people will use a uh, they we hand hold it all right yep yeah. I, yeah, I don't see anybody out there with a tripod and a gimbal head to use. To see no, anybody. I mean, no, it's very rare. No, very but rare. There, were, there was like 20 photographers, 20 photographers on the Sun and Show. It's a giant, giant show to cover. Hey, uh, we are giving away some stuff today. Uh, we are giving away a, a Platypod Ultra, right? We're just, that's what we're talking about. So the ball head actually just attaches right to the platypod and that is your gear so that's what eric used for those low shots can we can we just pull one of those low shots up yeah, again I'll real see. quick here so that's what eric's got sitting in the grass is this very thin lightweight you know and that gives you that great low angle this is not a perspective you see very often in in aviation photography this very very low there it is it sits on the ground and then this is what i want to be this is it dude look at this yeah, that's All right. awesome. By the way, I want to give them some love because this thing's really, really nice. Uh, it's the Highline Small is the name of it. And it is from the Colorado Tripod Company. And uh, very, very nice. I just love it. It comes with a nice case. And uh, there it is. It is a super, super nice. It comes in different colors and stuff. But, I mean, that's... Dude, that thing is sweet. Boy, though, that thing's more Scott, than a better grip. Scott, do you remember when I did yeah, the B-29? Last I, forever. I, Go yes, ahead. that's true. See, I'm sorry, Larry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. See, you said, do you remember oh, no. when you shot the B-29? At night, and I sent you the photo, and you yes. and I went back and forth. Yes. That was done with a platypod and a ball head. Ah. That was a low angle. Ah, yeah. Yeah, you got to love the low angle. I the mean, low angle. It's definitely, and now, you do have to get close to whatever you're shooting. Yep. I mean, that's the one thing. I mean, I, yep. I'm, I'm physically, like, right there, I am as close as they would let me. I basically was like, how close can I get? You know, and that's where I'm going to be because I wanted to get as close as I could. So. All right. I, I want to show you a couple of real quick shots. All right. If I could, can we, can we look at a couple of shots here? All right. This one. All right. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's a Mustang. You know, you know, I love those, right? Yes. So what I wanted to show you about these were all of these shots, this one, these, all of these with my iPhone. Uh, these are yeah. all iPhone shots. I walked around with my iPhone just shooting just the iPhone. Now that's the ultra wide. So that is the equivalent of a 13 millimeter ultra wide that of course, Mr. Kuna got me hooked on. Did you, uh, do you have that ultra wide of you in front of the, the, yeah, there. So look at this, you this is capturing thing. the whole, what is this? The C17? What is this? Yeah. C17 capturing the whole thing, standing right in front of it with the but ultra, you're, you are the ultra wide lens. You're, you are, 10 feet from the front of it. Yeah, give me a yeah. second. Now this is shooting the jets with the with the iPhone, which is not great. They're just too <laughs> far away and I'm zoomed in. It doesn't look very good. It's just, now everybody, you see a thousand people shooting with their iPhones. I yeah. don't, now this is zoomed in to artificially a 10X zoom. That's where you're never supposed to use that zoom. Yes, it's like evil. It, it's, 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 it's nothing, it's trash. All right, so anyway, I just want to show you a couple of those shots. I do want to show you one more shot. Just give me a second and I'll, I'll pull this up. Go look at Eric for a second or something. Uh, I did want to pull up <laughs> one other. Look at Eric, because he's- Well, is there anything else, uh, Larry, like as far as uh, tips you give people, um, stuff with the air shows, any other tips that you'd have? Okay, if you're a beginner, what I like to try to teach people is you either shoot um, for a shutter speed with jets fast as your friends, so you want to be anywhere from 1600 to 2000, unless you want to try to pan, then you can uh, drop a little bit lower. If you're shooting, uh, the Heritage flight is probably one of the toughest ones. I will always tell people to at least try three, one three twentieth of a second and get some keepers before going lower on, on that. But again, start at a a medium size, uh, speed, like one three twentieth for prop planes, and then drop it down until you hit a point that your shot's completely fuzzy, then go back up again. 
That's a great tip. Yeah, that's thank awesome you, Larry. because yeah, that's exactly what I, we were at. Is you know, and that's where I start off with the one two fiftieth. Get a couple keepers <laughs> yep. and start going to one one twenty fifth, and then start going to one sixtieth, and then I went down to one thirtieth, and I'm like. Yeah, no, that ain't happening. Hey, I, I did that as well. I, <laughs> I shot up at 1 250th. Uh, here's the picture I wanted to show you, which was this is Eric took this of me standing in front of the C17 shooting with my iPhone. Yeah, so you're like so right there. Yep, you're right. And it's a giant, giant plane, and it'll still capture it all. Nice sky and everything, too, behind it. Uh, just wanted to mention a couple things real quick. Uh, we're also giving away the Boris FX optics. Now, yesterday we did a... A, to, uh, a webcast with the folks from Boris. So we had Ross from Boris Effects and we did a wide open webcast. You can go watch it on my Facebook page. So you may be watching on my <coughs> Facebook page now, but I had a buddy of mine call me yesterday and said, I watched that webcast and I immediately went and bought it immediately. He goes, that, that software blew my mind. And it, it does, it's mine. I learned things about the Boris Effects yesterday. I had no idea. So <coughs> thanks. Uh, thanks to Ross, Ross, yeah, Ross. Yes, Ross. Thanks to Ross, who who uh, took his time out and, and did a great demo and showed us stuff. Dude, there's stuff in there I had no idea. Yeah, it's such. And you know what? What I think we talked about yesterday on the webcast is it's even like this aviation, aerospace. You could use it totally different than a portrait photographer to use it. Yep. But yet there's so many things for both. Oh, yeah. And so, that's what's so great about so it. So if you guys get a chance, go and check that out. It's free. It's yesterday. It's on my Facebook page. So on my Facebook page is facebook.com slash skelby. So my first initial and my last name. We're also giving away a copy of my book, the iPhone photography book. It's brand new. It's hot. This book's on fire. I don't know. Anyway, but it is... Uh, the number one new release on digital photography now for over a month. So go check it out. And that is uh, over there on, you can see it on Amazon. Yep, that book is on fire. It is on fire. Also, um, we're giving away, no, that's it. The that's iPhone, it. The, the Boris Effects. That's it. And we got some winners. Who's winning today, Eric? So we got Little Herman is winning the Boris Effects Optics. And then we have Anna Amarilla is winning your iPhone book, and then JP Sylvan is winning the Platypod. So just contact us over at gridprize at kelby1.com, verify your information, and get your prizes. There you go. Also, I just want to mention, um, two of my books just came out in Spanish. So this is my digital photography book, which is my... my that that's one. my digital photography book. Thank you. My latest one, and this one is my landscape, the landscape photography book. Both of these are out in their Spanish translations. You know what's rare? They actually kept the same cover pretty much. Yeah. Now these are wider than my actual books. My actual books are six by nine, so they made them wider. But very often they'll change the yeah, covers so to something completely different. Like nothing like what we chose. And they're like, well, we know our market's better. So I'm like, okay. But anyway, but they kept, uh, kept the same cover. So those are the Spanish language editions of both of those books. Is that everything we covered? Oh, wait, 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 wait. One last thing. You guys remember me telling you about the TV show that I was on where it's a photo competition mm -hmm. with another guy, another photographer, some good, handsome, cool looking young guy that I had to go up against. Good photographer too. <laughs> the guy shoots lights out. Anyway, the TV show went live. It is live and you can watch it online. Give me a, uh, well, actually, if you just go to my Facebook page, scroll down and you'll see a little video of me talking about it. And I have a link there. You can go to the link that's in my Instagram account, at Scott Kelby. If you go look through my Twitter feed, you'll find it there. There's a direct link. The show is only total maybe 16, 17 minutes because there's no commercials. It just runs. But, uh, but so the, the whole family watched it last night and uh, it, I, I won't tell you what happens, but a lot of interesting thing happens, but there's Jeff Carpenter, who was really just a cool guy, such a good photographer, really, really good photographer. And I got to talk with him, you know, quite a bit during this, as we're, you know, doing some of the stuff for the show. And he was a very, really, really nice guy, genuine, good guy based in Nashville. And, and I, I can't stand him anyway, but uh, <laughs> scroll up a little bit. You can, you can, I think you can see, you can watch the show right there. It's called the great create. So uh, he and I are competing. They gave us a, a challenge. They didn't tell us what the challenge was. They go, you're going to get this challenge to do this thing. 
Then there is a local judge who chooses a winner. And then at the end of May, they're going to choose a winner from all these six or seven different competitions. To, and the winner gets, to, uh, gets a donation made to the charity of their choice, which mine would be the Springs of Hope Orphanage in Nukuru, Kenya. So uh, hopefully when, it, when, when voting opens, I'll tell you guys about it. But you can go watch the show right now, and I hope that you will. Larry. Yeah, you know, there's another thing yes, we need sir. to talk about of oh. Larry, right? Uh, you were talking about <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. Like, uh, we got to talk about, like, if you want to check out ISAP. That's, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Thank so, you very there much. You go. But just so, Larry, where can people yes, learn sir. about the organization that you lead like a boss? Well, a couple of things I'll tell you, uh, the viewers, is one, visit uh, aviationphoto.org. That's our official website. On the website, I would ask you to scroll down the page and you will see a link for a publication that the organization puts out for our members and everyone. It's a free publication on issue.com. You just click on the link, you can get all the back issues and there you'll see photography from around the world, stories, some tips. Uh, I'm getting Scott to hopefully write a couple of tips for us in the future. Oh yeah. And Eric, Eric has a cover already. But uh, some of the questions I've seen pop up, uh, there's a lot of answers there. And also, if anyone's interested in possibly wanting to join uh, ISAP, uh, go to the membership page. But before you do anything else, we have another link there that will take you to a, a, a publication just with the members who had joined. Uh, it's always better, in my opinion, I feel I can sell ISAP all day long, but I think it's always great to hear from other people who've been a part of the organization, what they got from it and what they've learned. So uh, those are some things that I can recommend you to look at. There are a lot of great tips, not only on our, uh, on our Instagram or uh, on our site, but the, ma the magazine itself, it's, it's, a, it's a labor of love. Uh, Scott actually had a hand in, a, in us making a changeover and I think it's a little. I think it's a lot better since we made the changeover. But whether you're a beginner or an amateur or a professional, it's worked because I can tell you nothing else is to look at photos. The more you look at photos, the more you see how someone shot the photo, you develop your eye. You're gonna get good at an air show, okay? And whether you, if you go to an air show and it's a conversation I quickly had, now quickly end on this is that what you see the first day. You get that under your belt. Day two, day three, if possible, you're honing in those skills. You go back, review the night before, see your mistakes, know what you're going to look for. And by the end of the weekend, you're going to nail some great shots. Yep. Absolutely. Now, I've been saving this one last thing for the very end. And it's the biggest thing, I think, of all of this. So there is something that is very special about shooting an air show that is like no other genre of photography. And here's what it is. So if you want to shoot rockets like Eric does, Eric's on assignment from a magazine or, you know, from for SpaceX or somebody. He's there on assignment. He has to go get vetted and all this kind of crap. He's there for a job and he's got special access, right? He's getting to set up cameras at the pad. Well, there's, there's not 500 cameras at the pad. You know, there's just a handful of photographers that get that. If I shoot a football game, I've got special access. I'm shooting with a media uh, company and I'm, I'm down on the field. People that are shooting up in the stands, you know, number one, they don't let you bring a long lens in the stadium. Yeah. They, they, there's a certain number of inches you're allowed to yeah. bring in, so they make sure you can't take good shots. Yeah. And your angle, you lose all the dynamicism anyway. Even if they let you bring in a long lens, you're shooting down at an angle, it looks weird. It's like hockey. For hockey, you have to be at the ice level to make the dynamic shots. Well, how many photographers get the access to be able to make great shots? The problem is with all of these different genres, with rocket photography and with sports and all these different things, you need special access. You need it. Air show is the one genre where everybody can make great shots. Where we were setting up and shooting most of the time, you could actually, as a member of the public, get closer to the planes than we could. 
All you need to do is rent a lens if you don't already have a long lens and you can come back with every bit of good shot as anybody else or better shots than the pros because you have essentially the same asset. Uh, the, the planes are flying right over you just like they're flying over yeah, them. Yeah, it's definitely one of those genres where there is a level playing field. Yes, a right? level playing field. I mean, field. like basically, like what it is, it's more about than knowing like Larry was talking about, where to stand, where the jets turn in and out, yep. where the props turn in and out. Like, you need to understand the, the flow of the show and, and, and stuff like that, then being in like some special access. But that's why you need to join ISAP. Yeah. Like, Airspeed Magazine is wonderful. I look forward to every issue that comes out. Uh, it's, it, it, this is, I, I cannot, okay. I've been a member of ISAP, how many years now, Larry? 10, 11 years? It's, it's, uh, I think 12, about 12 years. I've been a member and, uh, it, it, it is a tremendous organization. I don't, I haven't seen anything like it out there. Uh, and if you get to go to an ISAP event in person, it, it is the greatest group of people. I mean, I don't know what Larry has done to just attract awesome people to his group. Uh, but he has done that. And I, and I, I take my hats off to you. I love <coughs> the way you run your events. Everybody learns, everybody's laughing, everybody's having fun. It really truly is a wonderful organization. I cannot recommend enough for our viewers. If you're, if you're in aviation photography and you seriously want to get better, that is your fastest route. And you've got this uh, level playing field of being able to go yes. and shoot at these, uh, at That's these air so cool shows. About it. And, and Scott, come away with the greatest shots, uh, same kind of shots the pros get. Scott, Eric, can I add something else when we're talking about air shows? Mm -hmm. Last year, air shows, we, we lost a lot of air shows. This year, all the air shows around the country, members of the International, uh, uh, International Council of Air Shows are doing a fantastic job of getting us back on the field. There are a lot of air shows throughout the country where you can get special access before, at night, or leaving. There are special photo passes that you can purchase to uh, get a little bit up close and personal. There are shows that you might find me at where I will take the time and take photo groups out. Oshkosh is probably for me one of the, that's a week of, of fun, but no matter whether you're in New York, Florida, California, Minnesota, Texas, if there's an air show nearby, check out the website. It's worth purchasing a ticket. Uh, there's so much more about aviation. We haven't even, touched on air to air photography but for a lot of your viewers and like both you scott and eric said the playing field is level at an air show and you will have fun you will you'll have uh, you'll have an absolute blast it, it really is a very special thing can we see their site again there it is just make sure you get i love that, that opening shot make I sure love, you get that 6600 i love that shot right there that shot <laughs> is very special i wish i knew who took it yeah, right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey, matter of fact, I think both Scott and Eric, I don't think you have your uh, portfolio up yet, have you? Oh, no. Go to the I, gallery have, I have not taken quick. the time. I'm, He's lame. I'm lame. I know. Go to the gallery. Go set it and up. And just go over. All right. We, we've we run way, yes. way, way over. Yes. Way over. Way over. But Larry, Whatever. thank you so much for joining us today. It happens. Uh, I, I appreciate you coming you and guys. sharing your wisdom. And it's great seeing you as always. And thank you for helping myself and Eric out every time there's an air show. Our first oh, call yeah, is definitely. to you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, great seeing you again, buddy. And we'll talk again soon. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to our crew here. And uh, thanks to the network for letting us run over by 13 minutes and 40 seconds. 41, 42. Uh, uh, also, uh, we will be back next week. I'm not sure what we're doing, but it'll be a show and it'll be, we'll be here. So thanks very much. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week right here on the grid. Take care, everybody. is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com.